The tomb of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, is located in the Lintong district of Xi'an in Shanxi. Surrounded by the renowned Terracotta Army, the tomb has never been opened by archaeologists because of rumors about potential booby traps. The ancient historian Sima Qian, who wrote about the emperor's death over a hundred years later, mentioned traps like crossbows and arrows that were set in place to fool intruders. And not just that, but some historical records suggest that Qin Shi Huang's followers used mercury to create rivers and seas within the tomb to further drive people away from destroying the tomb. But what's so strange about this tomb that has terrified scientists? Join us as we talk about the mystery behind the mysterious tomb and how it has changed the way we see Emperor Qin Shi Huang forever. Ever since archaeologists tiptoed around the tomb, they've tried to ignore all warning signs about this mysterious monument. But what they couldn't understand was what's going on with all the mercury. While some scientists have dismissed many historical accounts surrounding China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, as just another legend, a study conducted in 2020 revealed alarmingly high levels of mercury in his tomb. This finding suggests that volatile mercury might be escaping through cracks, which is proof that the tomb has remained sealed and untouched for centuries now. This comes off as a huge surprise since it's now one of the few tombs on Earth that remains unopened. Qin Shi Huang, renowned for his role in unifying China, was apparently obsessed with consuming mercury in his pursuit of immortality. However, what he didn't realize was that the secret to a long life wasn't actually drinking liters of mercury. Now, historical records show that he may have ingested mercury and potentially died because of mercury poisoning at the age of 49. Apart from concerns about mercury, archaeologists are hesitant to excavate the tomb due to the risk of causing damage. Both the Terracotta Army and Qin Shi Huang's tomb site have UNESCO World Heritage status. In 1974, Farmers in China's Shanxi province made an astonishing discovery while working in a seemingly ordinary field. They stumbled upon fragments of clay human figures, which sparked a much larger excavation. Further digging revealed many pits beneath the field, each containing thousands of life-size terracotta models. These intricately crafted figures depicted soldiers, war horses, acrobats, officials, and animals collectively known as the Terracotta Army. Their purpose was to guard the tomb of Qin Shi Huang. Despite extensive exploration around the mausoleum site, the emperor's tomb itself has remained sealed, keeping its secrets well kept for over 2,000 years. However, the booby traps aren't the only reason why archaeologists were hesitant to open the tomb. Opening the tomb of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, raises significant concerns about potential damage and loss of historical information, especially considering the invasive archaeological techniques currently available. If we compare this to the damaging excavation of Troy by Heinrich Schliemann's team in the 1870s, it's no secret that there are a lot of risks when it comes to excavation of such historical sites. As a result, scientists have proposed non-invasive methods such as utilizing muons, which are subatomic particles generated during cosmic ray collisions. Acting as advanced X-rays, muons offer a promising avenue for exploration, although this method is not really popular yet. Moreover, the immediate dangers posed by potential booby traps within the tomb are another reason why there haven't been any attempts made to open it. And the fact that there is mercury adds another layer of concern. Now let's talk about what's inside Qin Shi Huang's tomb. Archaeologists are currently expanding their excavations at the mausoleum of Qin Shi Huang. During the third century BC, Qin Shi Huang governed the largest unified kingdom in the Far East, laying the groundwork for imperial China. Under the Qin dynasty, the empire thrived in military prowess, economic prosperity, and technological advancements. 
However, after Qin Shi Huang's death in 221 BC, the empire experienced a rapid decline. The thing is, Qin Shi Huang was super motivated and initiated the construction of an expansive and opulent tomb located outside the Qin capital of Xi'an. According to legend, construction on the tomb started when the emperor was just 13 years old, so it required a huge workforce to complete. Despite attracting numerous tourists, the tomb remains unexplored. But if the legends are accurate, the mausoleum could potentially contain treasures and decorations unparalleled in ancient history. Qin Shi Huang's tomb is located 35 kilometers east of Xi'an, nestled between the Lishan Mountains to the south and the Wei River to the north. According to traditional Chinese geomancy beliefs, the landscape resembles a dragon, with the imperial tomb situated within Li Mountain, symbolizing the dragon's eye. Li Mountain, once larger but now diminished by erosion over 2,000 years, is adorned with lush vegetation and spans approximately one square mile, comparable in size to the Great Pyramid of Giza. However, comparing the scale of the first emperor's tomb solely by the mountain's dimensions would be rather unfair. It was no secret that Qin Shi Huang wanted to live a long life. In fact, he also believed in the concept of an elaborate afterlife and thus orchestrated the transformation of a vast area several kilometers wide around Li Mountain into an extensive above-ground and underground city. Guarded by his impressive terracotta warriors, this city reflects his aspiration for a majestic final resting place befitting his stature. Discovered in 1974 by local farmers while drilling a water well near Xi'an, the terracotta warriors stand as one of the most extraordinary archaeological finds of modern times. This remarkable collection comprises life-sized statues, including soldiers, chariots, horses, officials, acrobats, strongmen, and musicians, estimated to number around 8,000. During a special exhibition in London from 2007 to 2008, when a few of these statues traveled abroad, the British Museum saw its most successful year ever, even surpassing the famed Tutankhamun exhibition of 1972. Since the initial discovery of the Terracotta Warriors, archaeologists have extensively explored the surrounding area, uncovering a network of 180 distinct sites. These sites contain miniature representations of offices, towers, walls with gates, gardens, lakes, animals, entertainers, and decorative ornaments. It appears that Qin Shi Huang, in his quest for immortality through unconventional means, sought to create an entire replica world linked to his tomb. The artisans from the time painstakingly carved a map of the entire Qin kingdom into the floor while the ceiling was adorned with jewels to mimic the sky. Not only that, but simulations of rivers and oceans were achieved using quicksilver, which further enhanced the immersive nature of this underground world. The only source that is aware of Qin Shi Huang's tomb is the Shiji, or Records of the Grand Historian, written by Sima Qian, who served as a prefect of the Grand Scribes during the Han Dynasty. This historical narrative was compiled roughly a century following the first emperor's demise. Sima Qian's depiction of the tomb appears almost too good to be true. It is believed that it took around 700,000 laborers who were tasked with constructing a vast space filled with bronze after tunneling through three rivers. According to some sources, artisans meticulously carved a map of the entire Qin kingdom on the floor adorned the ceiling with precious jewels to emulate the sky, and utilized liquid mercury to simulate rivers and oceans, a substance believed to possess life-preserving properties during the Qin era. Remarkably, a specialized mechanism was reportedly devised to maintain the flow of these mercury rivers. Given the immense authority and resources at Qin Shi Huang's disposal, there arises skepticism regarding the plausibility of such an elaborate tomb. The sheer volume of mercury ore required for such a task 
would have amounted to tens of thousands of tons. As the tomb remains sealed, the accuracy of Sima Qian's narrative remains unverifiable. In 2005, a research team led by Chinese archaeologist Duan Qingbo employed ground-penetrating radar, electrical resistance measurements, and core samples taken from the vicinity of the tomb to generate a computer-generated image of its interior. This revealed a vast pyramid-like structure with a sealed chamber equivalent in size to a football field, believed to house Qin Shi Huang's tomb. To corroborate Sima Qian's description of Mercury Rivers, the team conducted an analysis of 4,000 core samples for traces of mercury vapor. Remarkably, all samples, particularly those from the area surrounding the burial chamber, contained elevated levels of mercury. This strongly indicates the presence of liquid mercury rivers encircling Qin Shi Huang's remains, potentially within a replica of his empire spanning the size of a football field. Despite the involvement of a vast workforce in constructing the mausoleum, historical records concerning its interior and contents are notably scarce. Shockingly, it's believed that the emperor resorted to executing each worker to safeguard secrecy, often by entombing them within the very earthworks they helped create. This grim and ruthless aspect of Qin Shi Huang's rule where those who contributed to the mausoleum were met with such a fate, prompts reflection on whether the memory of these workers should be honored by preserving the tomb sealed, rather than potentially disturbing their final resting place. However, with advancing technology, there's a growing prospect of gaining deeper insights into the tomb's contents. But what do you think? Was it the right move for scientists to open the tomb? Or are the Mercury Rivers just a hoax? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this.